Unseen Strands, where I, your host, Mo, am visually impaired and will be sharing with you bits and pieces of the rest of my life. Okay, I, that was kind of a mess. I'm trying a new thing because I want to kind of make my tagline crafting in the dark. <laughs> and I need to work that out. Anyways, so this is episode 37 in a row. That's a reference, but <laughs> if you get that, big points to you. Um, but yeah, I... Uh, Figured would kind of make this another mini episode since you guys seem to like that, and hopefully I have enough time to do that today. And yeah, we'll see how far we get. I have my 15-minute potty timer going right now, and we probably have about six or seven minutes left of that. So we'll see how far we can get through. Uh, I come to you from Central Iowa, where I live with my four boys, which hence the potty timer. <laughs> Uh, my three cats, my husband, and our dog. And yeah, so let's just hop right in. And this week, I have an FO, sort of. I mean, we still have ends to weave in. I really, really hate color changing in knitting. Um, so this is my first preemie hat. I do believe this was the proper size for the... Um, 10 to something inch, I don't remember what it was, 10 to 11.5 or something. So this would be the not quite full term, but pretty close. So that's that, but yeah, see, we have ends and stuff. I told you, I just, I don't like color changing, so I don't know if I'll do another hat like this, just because I'm, I need to either find someone else to weave in the ends, because that's kind of a visual thing, I don't want it to look terrible. But at the same time, um, I want to be able to do this myself. So <laughs> we'll just have to see. And of course, that was a project I had done from my Sticks and Strings 2019 project bag, which is a Silver Shed USA bag. I used, oh, you know what? I think my stitch marker is still over by the computer. I don't think I put it away last night. Um, but I just used, I have my, I actually did use the DPNs back when I got to the crown. And they were on size 7, so I also used my Knit Picks Interchangeable on the shortest cable that I have. I would really, really like to sometime get the Chow Goo shorties just so that, in the small sizes, so I wouldn't have to switch out to the stuff. But this is what I have, so that's uh, what we're working with, and if I didn't say that was size 7, these are all done in, or the hat was done in Karen Simply Soft. No idea how old this label is, because <laughs> um, I have at least three skeins, I believe, of white, or at least two. So, I have white, uh, red, and um, country blue. Just the country, not the dark or light, I believe, were my three colors in that. So, that was my finish object. Let's see. Oh, I have another like semi-finished object. I made one of these flowers which will turn into one of these hair clips or whatever clips because this I have just like on a barrette backing. I also have snap clips and um, alligator clips and pretty much every hairstyle thing <laughs> that I could for those, but that will turn into one of those eventually. But that was because I got to... Oh, I already put it in front of me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <coughs> I'd gotten to the point where I could break off. That's not the side that's broken off. <laughs> I got to the point where I could break off my husband's socks in progress um, and I wanted to make sure that I got that flower because I would like to make one of those flowers for every uh, indie dye sock that I make so that I have that little remembrance so this is what I have left and that will be going in the body of the sock or in the foot until it is gone so like I said I wanted to make sure I got that flower made before that yarn was totally gone this part is the Skull Crusher colorway, which is Rebel Pearl Yarns, and this is Boomstick. 
which is also Rebel Plural Yarns, as usual. This uses my the 3x2 um, Knit Pearl Cuff for 52 stitches, a leg of the in stockinette for 42 rows. I said 52 stitches. 52 rounds. It was, uh, I do 65 for the ribbing, 64 for the leg, just to make my numbers even. <laughs> um, and then I do a heel flap and guess it, I believe, is what that is. Um, which I do so I can, I do it till I can pick up approximately 16 stitches. Um, and these are all on my one and a half or 2.5 millimeter nine inch chow goo circulars. And this one still has my paradise fibers just because that one is locked in there until I get back to that point because I didn't use a removable stitch marker. <laughs> um, yeah, that one is ready. They're both actually ready to move on to the foot. I just haven't got there yet. <clears throat> I hadn't started it yet since I wanted something brainless that I could do while at singing tonight. This one I still need to cut off, but here's my boomstick. But yeah, same thing, except for I have one of my Becky Bless Your Heart stitch markers, and this is actually my stitch marker from Rel the Dab Dabbling Hook. I won that way back um, a year, two years ago. It was probably two years ago by now. For one of her subscriber giveaway things a long time ago like it was probably the first one she did that I actually participated in um, and that again is in my My Little Ponies uh, Silver Shed USA bag that I got at Sticks and Strings 2020 <clears throat> I'm surprised we have not had a timer go off yet Just gotta be getting close now this you won't actually notice any change in <laughs> but I actually did do some work on my drop spindling. Not a whole lot. This is actually a Black Mountain Welsh um, fiber. It's 100% that sheep breed. I, I still have this much left of it. But I just, I finally got, found, um, I don't remember what this, oh, this bag had wipes in it and the babies like ripped it. So I was like, I have this fiber that's laying around and it needs a proper bag. So <laughs> since I got it out to bag it, I actually properly stored it. So now the spindle and because I mean, I had the bag from Paradise Fibers, but it did not fit, you know, the spindle in it, of course. So I have that. And of course, that fiber is from Paradise Fibers, like I just said. <laughs> Uh, but I still have like half of that to go. It's got a long ways. Um, and I think we got through all the um, in progress work. I didn't do a whole lot this week. Alright guys, that actually worked out really well because the potty timer went off. But um, now we have more dishwasher sounds and I forgot to mention that you'll be hearing that in the background. <laughs> but that's mom life, guys. Um, so over the weekend, my husband's actually been looking for this um, RPG book information. I believe it's called Lamentations of the Flame Princess or something. It's like based on original D&D &D stuff, but it's all done by one person in Finland, maybe. Um, and the stuff is still coming out today, but the stuff is like super... Uh, small scale like 2,000 um, things in a print, 2,000 to 4,000 and like limited one-time release things. Um, but our local Half Price Books has been getting a ton of it in here and so he wanted to check out other Half Price Books and so he decided since President's Day he had a 20% off coupon, we were going to drive to Omaha. Well guys, there are at least three store yarn stores that we could find. Um, via Google that are in the Omaha area and they're all like not that far apart from each other. Um, so <laughs> on Saturday, since we were up early because Jeremy had a jazz band competition, his seventh grade jazz band got a one plus score, which is the best you can get. Um, for this competition that was on Saturday. I don't know a lot about the competition, so I believe that was just scored against themselves. I don't think they're scored against anyone else, and it's not like they progressed to anything else. 
so I'm not exactly sure what that means in depth <laughs> but I know that they got the best score that they could get so that didn't really surprise me because their band in general is just really good for I mean since they were in fifth grade they've just been really good um, so I really do like the band program in our local school district because it's just way good. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> back to the yarn. Uh, so we went to Personal Threads, I think is the one store. That store is actually really hard to find and it is located inside of an art gallery, but it's like upstairs from an art gallery. And it's just, it's a little hoity-toity <laughs> for our taste. Um, there wasn't actually anything wrong. We probably shouldn't have, but we left the kids in the car. <laughs> uh, since Jeremy is almost 13, we figured if anything happened, he could come and get us. And, you know, there was like nobody else there because it's not an easy shop to get to. Um, hi Ford. Would you like to say hi? Here's Monster Kitty, guys. Say hi Ford. <laughs> um, but yeah so we didn't get anything there I probably could have found one of the things I was actually looking for but I'm very bad at talking to people especially if I don't know you out in public because that's that whole eye contact and familiarity thing I don't know if you're talking to me or the person next to me um, not that it was super crowded but and then my husband has like social anxiety <laughs> So we're, we're the not well-matched great pair. <laughs> like super well-matched that we both are terrible at like communicating with strangers. Because um, what I wanted is I wanted some like some of the Tunisian crochet hooks that hook on to the Knitter's Pride type cable ends because that is the knitting needles that I have. So that is what I wanted to start with but know where I went except Personal Threads may have had it because they had a whole wall of stuff, but they're all behind the counter and we weren't going to ask specifically because it just, it, it didn't have that friendly vibe. It was a very, you know, art gallery vibe inside that store. Um, so we just didn't actually get anything at that particular store, but they also have a store called the Woolly Mammoth. I don't know. I think that's just a clear bag, actually. Um, and I got this skein of yarn, which is dyed. I'm not sure if this is dyed by the store, because this looks like the same kind of tag that a Whimsical Wood Yarn Co. I guess I don't know which um, <clears throat> store this it, or dyer this is. Try down here, because I was holding things up way too high last time. Um, they come with these since they're dyed for that particular store, they come with the little woolly mammoth uh, stitch marker. And that is a stitch marker because it does not have a removable. But we got this colorway, which was... I can't remember the name. It had frog and something in it. <laughs> um, fox and frog or something, I want to say. I don't remember, guys. Saturday was a long time ago. This is actually almost a sport weight, but it said it was... I don't know if it said it was fingering, but I think it was only 300 something yards. Um, but it still makes socks, so that's what we're going to go for. Still the merino nylon. So I got that one there, since it was something I was only going to get there. And the Littles actually went into that store with us, and they were totally cool with them being around. They said that their grandkids are in the store all the time. <coughs> so... It's nice to see stores that actually like kids because I, I probably would have had a heart attack taking them into the other one because like I said you had to walk not like through an art gallery but definitely into an art gallery <laughs> to um, get the elevator to go upstairs to the yarn store and yeah um, not so friendly for small children um, and then we went to Imagine Knits which is um, Again, we left the kids inside the, the car, but that was because we could park literally outside the door like the entire time. We could see what they were doing from where we were in the store. Um, I actually talked to their people a little longer because I actually did ask about the Tunisian 
uh, crochet hooks and stuff there. But I got this skein, which is an alpaca wool nylon blend. It is a sock blend, so there's actually, um, probably like your uh, patents, there's actually a skein for the heel and toe and then a skein of the dye. But this was the electric sheep <laughs> color. Um, we actually saw this right when we were walking out because we were going to not get anything there, but then we saw this nice, bright, beautiful skein and had to have that one. <clears throat> but again, their store was a lot more kid-friendly. They said they had like hot chocolates and toys and the little uh, craft era, you know, because they all have a little space that you can actually craft inside the store. Um, so they would have been accepting to the kids, but the one person, the employee, did not seem like she was as kid friendly as the actual store owner was. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was our trip to Omaha and the things there. And then I was going to go ahead and share with you what I was reading, and you probably won't be able to read this. Um, and actually, but I am currently, I have actually been reading this since October because it really took me a long time to get into it because it's just written kind of in a diary format and it was just really hard for me to follow because the first couple chapters weren't as interesting. <laughs> um, but I'm reading Strange Harvest and the, the Strange, Strange Harvest, the Hidden Histories of Seven Natural Objects or something like that. Several natural objects. Um, and I, it doesn't tell me who it's by on this particular page. Um, but I'm in the chapter about Vicuña, I believe is how you, I don't know how it's spelled, um, so I can't tell you better. It's the, it's a camelid that is related to alpaca, llama, camel, um, but the rarer ones that you can't find so much. And so we were in that chapter uh, last night, <laughs> which is why I wanted to share with you. Uh, so I am totally drawn into this book now. Um, the chapter before this was about a sea silk, which is made from the beard of this clam, which is also, I don't remember um, quite what they were called, basilic, basilic, something like that. Um, but that, of course, got me totally pulled in because it was about a something that they spun that made this super um, like shiny silk thing that they wove these magnificent pieces with but again a endangered things like all these things that are in this book are like endangered things um, that was a woven thing and now we're into a fibery thing that's supposed to be like silk and yes yeah, so I've just been totally drawn in with my fibery goodness and of course since this thing is in northern Chile Peru <laughs> <laughs> the uh, chapter that I'm reading about, um, since they're in that area, I just feel like I'm pulled right back into um, my ancestors because for those new viewers, my dad is actually from Chile and then I am half like Spaniard Chilean and then half native Chilean. Um, <laughs> well, I'm half Chilean and then the, that half, so a quarter Spaniard and a quarter native. <laughs> If that makes any sense. Um, so while reading this, I just feel like my whole obsession with fiber and arts and crafts and all that stuff, especially the fiber, um, just feels like it's tying me back to those grassroots of my ancestors because they were saying in this book that, you know, gold and stuff was something they had, but the prized hidden um, th possessions that they found in these temples and stuff was the fiber, the fabrics, the, this, you know, this hidden goodness of this craft thing that, you know, we all take for granted. And I was just like, oh, this just speaks, speaks to my heart, you know, so, so very much. Um, so I thought I'd share that with you. Like I said, I don't have who it's by and it's written like as they're traveling to these different places, looking at things. The first part was like about a duck down or something, a bird down, and although that was interesting, it just wasn't my cup of tea, and then they had something about these bird nests that are like edible. <laughs> it was not my cup of tea at all. Um, 
trying to remember what else has been covered. Uh, that might be it, because I might be on four. Four of seven. I'm not sure. There might have been another one in there that I'm forgetting completely about. Because like I said, I've been reading this since October. I just have a lot of trouble getting into the writing style. Um, but that was uh, something I'm currently reading. Just in case you're into that kind of things. Um, yeah, but I think that's about all I have for this particular episode. We are still working hard on the potty training thing. I actually have Zane in just underwear. Um, Leo's basically done. We still have overnight training to do with him. But I'm way less stressed out about that because for his own safety, we kind of have to keep him locked up in his room for overnight. And I don't want to not have him locked up because I'm afraid he'll get into things that little boy should not be getting into because he is our light sleeper and the not sleeper of the bunch. Uh, so I'm way less freaked out about him not being overnight trained. But Zane, we're still struggling on the daytime training. So I have him in underwear so hopefully he can realize without these fancy diapers that pull the moisture away when he is going pee. So. Hoping that that actually kicks him into potty training the whole way. <coughs> uh, like I said, Jeremy did his band competition. He has another uh, jazz band thing this Friday, uh, which is like at his school or with the high school or something. Um, for this week, and then Sam doesn't have anything special going on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, guys, and that's going to do it for this edition of the Unseen Strands podcast. And if, of course, you enjoy this episode, I'd appreciate if you would click the like button and subscribe. We'll talk to you later, guys. <laughs>